All right, guys, we're going to have a look here at two different data logs. Um, they're both of a mid nine second LSA. Uh, they're both actually running very similar boost. Obviously, the ET is also very similar. And uh, one of them is fitted with the factory LSA intercooler pump, and one is fitted with an EMP reprogrammed intercooler pump with dash 16 hose. Uh, both cars have reservoirs. The first one here that we're looking at is the one with the LSA in a cooler pump. Now, here we're referencing RPM, road speed, which is there, RPM and road speed. Uh, this is pedal position, so obviously this is prior to the run, I'm logging the percentage here. Manifold air pressure, coolant temperature, intake air temperature at the MAF, and IAT2 in the supercharger. Now, it starts off obviously with a 12 degree IAT2 and then we'll scroll about to the finish line there um, it crosses the finish line with a 46 degree intake air temperature which is actually pretty good it's way colder than what a heat exchanger would provide you with uh, a heat exchanger would be 80 plus um, and it's obviously that actually trapped about 145 mile an hour so the tyre calculator has obviously not been applied uh, in the tune for the different size rear tyre um, so we can obviously see it started out at 12 and it went to 46. That's a 34 degree temperature differential. Um, now let's go to the other data log. Very similar temperature. Starts out at 11. And then we go over to here. End of the run. Uh, same, same speed. It was trapping about 145. So the tyre calculation change hasn't changed because of the larger tyre on the rear of the car. Uh, but it's crossing the finish line at 31 degrees, um, which is impressive because that's only a 20 degree temperature differential versus the other one, which is a 34 degree temperature differential. Now, that's really good because obviously, you know, you can still have much colder intake air temps feeding in the same amount of timing still, um, or more timing potentially. Here we can see the boost pressure on the one with the EMPs at 208. Uh, the one without is at 211. Now it's, it's extremely similar boost, obviously. But what we can also see here is IOT1, which is the temperature of the air at the MAF that's being ingested, is 18 degrees on the one with the LSA. So the air going into the charger is only 18 degrees and it coming out at 46. Whereas the one with the EMP, the air is actually hotter. It's going in at 28 and then coming out at, at 31. Now, the reason that this works is some people think, you know, you want your fluid to pass through slowly, pick up temperature, and take it away and dissipate the heat. And that's not the case. When you're in wide open throttle under, under boost pressure, you know, that air temperature pre intercooler could be, you know, 160, 200 degrees. And all you're trying to do at that point is flood that intercooler brick and punch the fluid through there as fast as physically possible. So say the fluid temperature is zero, you want to try to keep the brick at zero. So then that 200 degree air hits a zero degree surface and drastically changes in temperature. Now, in this particular case with the EMP pump, it's flowing through faster. So the brick is actually staying at a more stable, colder temperature. Whereas with the one with the LSA, obviously still a very cold temperature, especially compared to a heat exchanger, but because the fluid's passing through slower, the brick is absorbing more temperature. Um, and you know it's obviously not able to effectively lower the intake air temperature as much. So the faster that the fluid flows through, the colder the intake air temperature will be. Um, this is why it's important to run a reservoir for additional coolant volume big dash 16 hoses and a reprogrammed EMP in a cooler pump that will keep the temps lower again though this is still a good result 46 you know it's starting out at you know 12 after the burnout so it's already you know been through a big burnout heated up started at 12 finished at 46 so great result and then the other one obviously I think it started at 11 and finished at 31 even better result, you know, 14 degrees colder than the factory in a cooler pump. So keeping that temperature delta down uh, is important. Obviously both ways doing it either way is working really well. Both guys are running mid nines. Um, so they're both
both doing doing great. Um, so that's about it, really. Run, run a run a reprogrammed DMP intercooler pump. They're awesome. And uh, make sure you got dash sixteen hoses so you can get plenty of flow. Uh, reduce all the bends in your hoses as much as possible. You want to increase the flow rate as much as possible and do everything you possibly can to keep the flow rate as high as possible. So minimize all bends, keep everything as large as you physically can and you'll keep that temperature delta down. And like I keep saying, this is not a bad temperature. This is still a good temperature. Um, you, know, you can even see, you know, mid track, it's still 30s and everything. You know, that's middle of third gear there. So you're still, you're not, probably not even pulling timing um, on this particular car. Probably not even pulling anything out. The finish line will be about there somewhere because he would obviously gotten off the throttle after he crossed the finish line. Um, so yeah, it's a really good comparison. Very even cars to show you the comparison on, on what the difference between is an LSA intercooler pump and an EMP intercooler pump. Both cars fitted with chillers, both fitted with reservoirs.